Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, before we get started on these great questions, I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting, sharing, liking all the videos. Really helps the channel. First question comes from Jason A. Hi, John. I need some advice on studio monitors. Right now, I'm using a pair of Yamaha HS5. I'm looking to upgrade to the HS8 or adding a subwoofer. What do you think is the best route to go? So I had the older version of those monitors, the HS50s, and they were great, and I was really happy with them for a long time. I got the opportunity to borrow a subwoofer from a friend, and that completely changed my opinion on subwoofers. And now I can't uh, believe that I was convinced for so long that I didn't need a subwoofer because now I feel like they're pretty much essential, especially if you want to have those smaller speakers. You know, they, they're they powerful, they're punchy, um, great uh, note definition, things like that, transient response with those smaller speakers. Um, and you don't really get that when you get, you move up to the larger like eight inch cones. You don't really get that punch and detail unless you're going like super high end with very powerful amplifiers in those speakers. So I no longer have the Yamaha speakers, but I do still have the Yamaha sub. I use with my full call monitor, as you can see right here, and I love that combination. So I think at some point you, you will grow out of those Yamaha monitors, but the subwoofer is a great value and will work with any system. There's kind of a myth that subwoofers overpower a room. I kind of found the opposite. Uh, the subwoofer just really helps fill in the low end, makes the the speakers feel bigger without sounding like a separate speaker. And I know that you already have some acoustic treatment, so it's not like putting in a lot of bass into a completely untreated room because you've already kind of covered that, at least the basics of that. So yeah, that's what I would recommend. Get a subwoofer. The next question comes from John F. How does one make smooth curves and straight angles when hand drawing in CC lanes? So this question actually came in before the Reaper 6 update, and it's it's super easy to make straight and curved lines in the MIDI CC lanes. Um, but also there's the old way that will still apply to things like velocities. So I will show you that now. All right, so here we are in the MIDI editor, and I'm gonna sh first show you this with the mod wheel. So how to get smooth points or sp smooth transitions between points. So I'm gonna shift click to make a first point and shift click to make the last point. And I can just drag that last point down and it automatically makes a linear ramp between those two points. If we wanna change this curve, we can just select the, the point, do a right click on the outside of that point. Don't click right on it or it will delete the point. Um, but we can choose the CC curve shape here. So we can put it on uh, slow start end, for example, which is does this very shallow S curve. Um, and that adjusts automatically. You can also hold down the Alt key and drag between the points, and that will automatically uh, adjust the tension between those points. So that's with the mod wheel or any of the CC lanes. Let's also do this with uh, velocities. So um, I'm going to hold down Command and Shift. That would be Control Shift on Windows grabbing those velocities and dragging them. And while I'm holding the, that keyboard, and while I'm holding that modifier, it will do a linear transition between those points. Pretty simple. Uh, I'll show you that in the preferences, uh, just in case yours are different. Um, so I've got mine, shift command, linear ramp CC events, but the default is ignoring selection. And so I just swapped those around basically. Shift command option does ignoring selection. So shift command option does all of the CC lane stuff where I'm clicking. But if I do shift command, it's only going to be the selected item or selected notes here and uh, do a linear ramp. It's kind of a hidden feature, but it makes sense once you do it a few times. Next question comes from Origin. Is there a way to disable the auto show of automation 
when I move an item from one track to another? This question actually came in through one of the live streams that I did recently. And um, if you're not subscribed, if you're not getting notifications, then you won't know when I'm going live because I don't always announce them in advance. But to answer your question, this is actually another simple one. Okay, so I've got a lead guitar here and it has some volume automation on it in this lane. Now, if I move this item left or right, that volume automation comes with it. As well, if I drag this down to the next track, the volume automation lane pops up. And this is more dramatic if you continually drag between different tracks, you can see that volume lane is popping up each time. So if you want to avoid that happening, you just disable this option here, envelope points move with media items or do not move with media items when it's off. And you can drag this around and the volume automation stays where it was. So left and right movement does not affect the envelope lane and it does not pop up envelopes on other tracks. And so when that's on also copy and paste, will do the volume automation with it, whether on the same track or not. So, you know, you don't need to um, stick with this one setting through your whole project. It's not really a preference that needs to be set and stuck with. You can change it as needed throughout your project. Next question comes from CS Burnett's. Have you always worked in Reaper or did you transition from Pro Tools? I didn't always use Reaper. Uh, I started out with computer recording a lot earlier than that. Uh, but let's kind of go back to the beginning, or at least what I can remember. So when I first got into computer recording, I actually didn't even have the internet at home. I used to have to go to the library and like try to guess which DAW would be good for me and uh, and download stuff to a little USB stick that I'd bring home to, uh, to install on my computer. I ended up with FL Studio. I also had Audacity and uh, I think Crystal Audio Engine, maybe a couple other ones. I think I went down to the Radio Shack and got a, a copy of Magic's uh, Music Maker or something, Music Studio, something like that. I had trouble with all of them. I Mostly my main DAW at the time was FL Studio. I did a lot of electronic music in that kind of industrial stuff. And that was a ton of fun but it totally didn't work when I wanted to record guitars and things like that. And I was kind of stuck with that for quite a while. I didn't even understand that I needed an audio interface at the time. Uh, I ended up going to audio school in the couple months be between moving and going to audio school. I bought a Presonus Firebox. And once I got into school, I realized I needed Pro Tools. There's no way around that. So I switched to a double uh, two rack. I bought a new PC. Uh, so I, I spent, I don't know, $3,500 just on an interface and a computer. And I still had trouble with Pro Tools and stuff like that. I ended up becoming very good with Pro Tools. And I, I totally geeked out on it. Um, tried to learn as much as possible through school, through Kenny Joyo's videos uh, back then when he was primarily teaching Pro Tools. I learned so much from him back in the day and and still do, of course. And yeah, so I was using Pro Tools from version 6.4, I think it was, up to version 8, which was about six years or so. And, and then I didn't really want to continue with uh, supporting that company past version 8. Um, I switched to Reaper, and here we are now. Also, I tried uh, Logic, Cubase, Sonar, um, either through school or through work. Um, you know, I, I tried out pretty much all the DAWs that were out there and Reaper was the one that made the most sense for me. The last question comes from DJ Lou. Does Reaper have a stock soft clipper and what's a good third party one to use? Reaper actually comes with two built in. There's the JS soft clipper and the JS event horizon clipper limiter. They're both pretty good, but third party plugins are gonna give you a lot better graphics and just visual feedback of what's actually happening, like gain reduction meters, things like that. One that I use very frequently is the LVC Audio Clip Shifter. That one has a great visual of the dynamics and, and different uh, thresholds you can set and you know how much clipping, and how much kind of uh, harmonic saturation you're getting. Really flexible, really great sounding plugin. The T-Rex one's actually really decent because it's so simple, just like two knobs and it works. I actually did a video a few years ago about 
mastering using clippers. And uh, so I'll have a link to that in the show notes. So that's it for the Q&A this week. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my patrons, Mark Kilborn, Gerald Sima, John Mark Giffen, David Jellema, Igor Agorkin, Futari Media, Luca Fusi, Matt Kirkhoff, Small Systems, John Swihart, Brian Hilliard, and Glenn Kiefer. Thank you guys so much. These are my top patrons. If you want to get a shout out in one of these Q&A videos, you can uh, sign up as a patron for $10 a month. $5 a month gets your name in the Q&A video. Any amount gets you access to the patron show and other exclusive content. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blogs through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Mm -hmm.